In this class we want to talk about organizations and uh, the associated structures and specifically you want to mention the span of control and see what, what is meant by this. So to start, um, what is span of control? Well the span of control refers to the number of subordinates, the number of workers that uh, report to a superior within an organization. So for example you could talk about the span of control of the manager in terms of the number of workers reporting to the manager. The concept of span of control looks at into how uh, relationships are developed between subordinates and the manager in the organization. Um, clearly it's important the number that report to a given manager if it's a large number it would cause stress for the manager and perhaps each worker would not get the attention that the, the, the job demands and indeed that the, the worker perhaps deserves to successfully complete the task that was given. There are two common types of span of control. Um, first of all there's a narrow span of control this refers to a single manager who is in charge of monitoring a few subordinates and this introduces us to what's called a tall organizational structure. So a narrow span of control means very few workers reporting to a given manager. That may mean that more managers are required. And that may in turn mean that the managers need to have a manager. So there's another layer of management. So you can see this idea of tallness creeping in. If there are more and more managers because each one have a narrow span of control, each one have a few each one of them has a few workers, then the managers may need a manager. In fact there may be several managers above the managers a middle tier of management. And in fact, if there are a lot of those, there will be an extra tier of management required above them again. So this introduces this idea of a toll organization, which we'll come back to uh, later on. There's also the, the possibility of a wide span of control, which refers to a manager who supervises a large number of subordinates, a large number of workers. And this is seen as a flat organizational structure. Let's think about it for a second. If each manager has a large number of workers reporting to him or her, then there'll be fewer managers because each one's looking after a bigger number of workers. Fewer managers means less management is required above them. So the organizational type will be flatter. Again, as I said, we'll come back to those. Uh, concepts in a few moments. The narrow span of control is more expensive than a wide span. Well, narrow because fewer workers are reporting to each manager. So obviously it's more expensive. There has to be a manager perhaps for every six workers as opposed to a manager for every 40 workers. So obviously the narrow span of control will be more expensive. A wide span of control uh, is useful for organizations whose workers are not geographically located. Um, a wide span of control means that the manager can, can look after many workers who are perhaps uh, not necessarily within the same department but who would have to report through, let's say, another um, worker layer, perhaps foreman or charge hands, would report to the manager. So a wide span of control doesn't mean that all the workers are congregated into one small geographic area. A wide span of control could mean that it's, it's fairly widespread. There is a manager looking after perhaps several departments. 
The narrow response control provides opportunities for growth within the organization if there are many managers because few workers report to each one many managers then there's an opportunity perhaps with managers retiring or resigning moving on to new careers or new opportunities or whatever then there is a there is an opportunity within the business for promotion so workers can aspire to a promotion which will perhaps foster a, a sense of uh, workmanship and dedication to the work because they want to be seen to be good workers to stand a chance for of promotion. So let's get back to this idea of flat and tall organizations. That's a flat organization on the slide. It's got a, a manager or um, a superior, somebody who's in charge, and there are various functions underneath. So there's only one manager, all the functions report. So it's a very flat organization. In this case, there would be, I'll put the cursor onto the screen, there's one, two, three, four, five. There are five functions reporting to the supervisor. It could be five workers reporting to the supervisor. So the flat organization consists of few levels of hierarchy. Well, in this case, it's just one level above the workers. Um, obviously there's good communications because uh, the workers relate to the manager directly. So communications uh, is promoted by this type of uh, structure. It's not very bureaucratic. Uh, there are not a lot of rules passed on, passed down from the senior management. Um, and what rules there are passed down are interpreted by the manager and given to the workers, usually given by verbal instruction. Uh, flat organizations typically do not communicate on paper. Most of the communications would be, tend to be uh, word of mouth. It's a decentralized structure. The, the managers have got a great deal of capacity and scope to make decisions. Um, there's only one, there's one manager above them perhaps, uh, so they themselves have to uh, devise solutions when things go wrong or to um, incorporate ideas that perhaps um, have to be introduced. They, how the ideas are incorporated or implemented would perhaps vary from manager to manager. So there's a great deal of decentralization. The managers have got more power under this system. There's less control from above. It tends to be informal. As I said, um, a lot of the communications tends to be uh, spoken. Uh, there's a, a predisposition for the spoken word. They don't like it written down. It's time consuming and also when it's written down it becomes very difficult to modify and to change. It might, it might upset people to have constant change like that. So what are the disadvantages of the flat organization? Well, uh, the flat organization does little opportunity for career provision because there's nowhere to progress to. The, the management structure is very, very flat. There are the workers and a manager and perhaps a superior above the managers. So there's very little opportunity for promotion. If there were a lot of managers required, then there may be more opportunity for promotion. Um, also, supervision is is hectic for um, a small, sorry, for a flat organization. Um, supervision is hectic because there are so many workers reporting to the same manager. So the manager has got to <clears throat> keep the business running, keep the department running, 
look after the capital, make sure there's raw materials for to get the work done, look after the welfare of the workers, answer queries from the workers. It's a fairly stressful occupation because there are so many of them. So that's a, a disadvantage of the flat organization. Now in contrast, the toll organization has got more structures, so it's got more hierarchies. I'll put the cursor onto the screen. Here are the workers down the bottom. Here's a layer of management here. And perhaps there's a, another manager looking after those managers. So we have the workers reporting to the managers. And the managers has another manager looking after them. And this manager reports to the superior, to the CEO, the chairman of the company, or the managing director, whoever's in charge. And over here you'll have another manager reporting to the person at the top. They'll have This one here will have managers reporting to him or her. And underneath you have the workers reporting to those managers. So you can see there are more hierarchies here. There's, there's a, it's a taller structure. So fewer workers report to each manager. Um, so the span of control for each manager is narrow. It's a narrow span of control. The organization has more hierarchies. There are more layers to the organization. And it's centralized um, to a large extent. Decision making is controlled by the managers. Particularly it's controlled by the management at the top. Because there are more managers, management at the top can tell what is required all the way through the organization. And because there are more managers to implement the policy. So it tends to be more centralized. Because there are more um, tiers, more hierarchy, there's more opportunity for promotion. So workers can be motivated by the opportunities within the organization. So it may lead to greater productivity or greater application to get the task done. By and large, toll organizations are more formal. There's more written directions. Um, there are more formal groups, more formal meetings. Um, so it's controlled in a in a very formal way. The, the disadvantages of the toll organization, well, it tends to be a bureaucratic structure. It has rules and policies and instructions. Maybe it's a large organization, so the person at the top needs to codify, needs to write down all of the decisions, all of the processes and all of the requirements. So it tends to be more bureaucratic. And communication can be complex. Uh, managers speaking to each other across departments might be, become a problem because the organization is perhaps large and it's tall. Uh, getting to talk to other managers might be a problem. Uh, even meeting them might be a problem. So meetings tend to be formalized, booked at a certain time. And for managers to communicate with each other, they may need to book slots. They may have calendars to, to book in appointments. and So it's much more complicated, the communications. With the flat organization, it was, it was very, very straightforward. Let's have a look at the, the span of control. The span of control uh, usually around 15 to 20 employees per manager uh, or traditionally there should be a number of six employees per manager writers vary on this and it's it's all very arbitrary it depends really on what's been produced it depends on what's the best way of producing what's the technology in production um, it depends on a lot of factors. So writing down a figure like 15 to 20 or ideally 6 it's broadly 
and I suppose it's probably meaningless in some respects. It depends critically on what's been produced, how it's been produced, what the technology is, how valuable is the component being produced or, or the product being produced, how big is it, how technically challenging is it. So it depends on a lot of factors. So it depends, the smell control depends on the nature of the job. So putting a figure on, as I said, is quite almost quite arbitrary. It also depends on the skills and capabilities of the manager and the employees. If the employees are highly skilled individuals, they may not need a lot of supervision from the manager. So there may be um, less less requirement for intervention by the manager if the workforce are skilled. It also depends on the relationship between the the manager and the employee. If they have a good relationship, um, not much supervision is required. If they have a bad relationship, perhaps the manager needs to keep an eye on the worker to make sure the worker is being productive and applying him or herself to the completion of a task. So the span of control depends on a lot of things. Um, putting a figure on it is uh, pretty much pointless, but some writers have done it and that's why it gets mentioned here in the slide. So that's, um, that's our talk on span of control on flat organizations and tall organizations and uh, that completes the video. So thank you for watching.